These exercises are killing your neck. A strictly forbidden action for your neck is rotating your head in a circular motion. Be honest, have you ever done this kind of warm-up? Headaches, pinched nerves, high blood pressure, these are the consequences you'll have to live with if you keep doing the wrong exercises. Hello everyone, Dr. Dlin here, and today we're going to talk about the most harmful exercises for your neck. Spend a few minutes watching this video so you won't be complaining about spine problems when you're older. Think back to your PE class at school. In 90% of cases, it often started with this kind of circular neck rotation. This exercise was used as a warm-up. I remember myself how we were made to do this at school. Let's take a look at what's really behind this seemingly innocent movement. When we rotate our head in a circle, making these circular motions, our vertebrae start moving simultaneously in several planes. This leads to them getting blocked very easily, because the joints can't work in multiple planes at once. They're not designed for that, only for movement in a single plane. And our neck, ideally, doesn't just flop around like one of those bobblehead dogs you see in a car. Normally, it stays in the most stable position possible. That's why this exercise will only do harm, rather than prepare you for a workout or a workday. It might seem like, yes, maybe it does warm up the muscles, but when the joints are locked, it overloads the segments, and very often this can lead to unpleasant issues in the neck in the future. And before we move on, make sure to give this video a like. I really want as many people as possible to see this video, because many people injure their necks without even realizing it, and end up having serious problems in the future. The next exercise is tilting the neck to the side and then pulling it with your hand. Overall, I can't say that tilting your neck to the side is a bad thing. I give these exercises myself and explain how to do them correctly. All the problems start exactly when a person, after tilting their head to the side, begins to press down hard on it from above to increase the stretch, like people say, to, for example, strengthen the neck. Actions like these lead to a redistribution of blood flow and put extra strain on the vertebrae and intervertebral discs. If you overdo it even a little with the force, that's it. Tomorrow, you won't even be able to turn your head. Do neck tilts to the side, but don't forcefully press down on your head with all your strength. Take care of your neck. But before we continue dealing with harmful exercises, I want to discuss why the neck is such an important organ and why I even started talking about it in the first place. The spinal canal in the neck is very narrow. This is where the spinal cord passes through. And just so you understand, it's much narrower than in the lower back. Basically, our spinal canal is shaped like a cone. In the cervical region, it's narrower, and in the lumbar region, it's much wider. And, for example, if we're talking about a 5mm herniation in the lumbar region, it won't be as dangerous as a 5mm herniation in the cervical region. A 5mm herniation in the cervical region can cause a huge number of problems. Moreover, in the cervical region there are also three very large nerve nodes, a huge number of different nerves, and naturally, with improper movement, they can get compressed. All of this is often accompanied by headaches, numbness in the hands, and back pain. And if the hernia in the cervical spine is about a centimeter, it can already compress the spinal canal, the spinal cord canal, and lead to paralysis. Many doctors say, well, it's just a hernia. Let's just monitor it. I completely disagree with this. You can't just observe a hernia. You can and should work with it so that it doesn't grow and lead to unfortunate consequences. Why just watch and only start acting when something has already happened? You need to act earlier. Well then, let's keep going. And let's move on to the third very harmful exercise. Remember, any variations that put a load on your neck using your own body weight are dangerous. The bridge, the reverse bridge on your head, in other words, when you put your weight on your head, these are things I do not recommend doing. After a workout like that, you risk, well, in quotes of course, breaking your delicate, fragile neck and ending up disabled. But seriously, it puts a strain on a rather delicate, let's say, ligament system, because in the neck it's less reinforced than in the lower back. And the intervertebral discs also experience increased stress. Our cervical spine isn't ready, so to speak. It's not designed to handle increased loads. And to wrap up our video, as a caring doctor, I simply have to share a couple of my secrets with you and show you the very best exercises for the cervical spine. When working on the neck, it's important to also engage the thoracic region, because there are a lot of muscles in the thoracic area that attach near the neck. For example, the rhomboid muscle attaches to the occiput. Let's find out how this works. And the first exercise looks like this. Stand up straight and extend your arms to the sides. Then bend your arms at the elbows and clasp your hands together, like this. While overcoming resistance, try to maintain tension in your arms and start performing what are called translational movements. These kinds of movements can be done with the neck. Move your head three times to each side. Alright, let's move on to the second exercise. Stand up straight and extend your arms to the side so that they are parallel to the floor. Then bend them at the elbows to 90 degrees so that your fingers are pointing toward the ceiling. From this position, straighten your arms upward and keep your shoulder blades together the whole time, holding your arms above your head for 7 seconds. And make sure to repeat this movement several times. Well, I've shown you everything, and now it's really important for me to get your feedback. Write your questions or thoughts about today's video in the comments. And in general, I want to say that the neck is a very delicate and important part of the body, and no one can take care of it except you. And I'll be happy to help you with useful tips. 
Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. Of course, to take care of your health wisely, this was Dr. Glynn with you. Bye-bye.